Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video I want to talk about the Cold Vein uh, beta, the private beta that was uh, held uh, this weekend and my impressions from it and uh, actually how much of a Souls game is Cold Vein. I know a lot of people are talking about how this is the anime Souls game or something. So I want to share my impressions uh, with you. Uh, first of all I want to say that the customization options are very cool in this game. Here I tried Nijima Sai from Persona 5 if you know her. She's a very cool character in that game so as soon as I saw the like this uh, particular preset I wanted to try and create her in the game. I don't know how much uh, I succeeded but uh, yeah this is the idea that I got from the customizations options. Okay, so I have played the traditional Souls games for thousands and thousands of hours. I have also played um, games like Immortal Unchained, uh, Southern Sanctuary. I have played Sekiro a lot. And uh, I am going to mainly compare Cold Vein to the traditional Souls games. And also we'll compare it to Sekiro, which is uh, the latest from software game, which is considered to be sort of like a not a traditional Souls game. So uh, I think this is the most uh, fair like comparison that can be made. Okay, so with all that being said, let's go. Okay, first off, let me say that the combat system will be very intuitive to a traditional Souls player. Although the attacks are not done with the shoulder buttons, but rather with uh, square and triangle on the default PS4 controller configuration. Uh, you can play in the traditional souls based like uh, pattern reading with and counter attack fashion with uh, rolls and uh, like uh, fast reaching attacks with big weapons. Okay. Also the back steps in this game are easy to do on some opponents and a little bit harder to do on other opponents but uh, you can do backstabs even on bigger opponents which is uh, cool I guess and uh, as uh, the final game uh, like reaches its meta I think that more people will be able to abuse uh, backstabs in this game but not to the extent that you are going to see something like a uh, teleport backstabs and stuff like that so the traditional like method of fighting will uh, be applicable also um, I like the idea of uh, how the progression with the builds is made into this game so uh, you can definitely have builds in this game uh, unlike Sekiro you, you can of course make the argument that in Sekiro you can do Something like uh, uh, certain styles of uh, play with uh, certain like prosthetic uh, arm skills paired with combat arts in order to create quote unquote a build. But uh, here it's uh, much more straightforward. You can uh, change your um, like class at any time and you can have two weapons that can be changed. Uh, in the middle of the game but not in the middle of uh, combos or something so uh, if you just change your weapon into a like a fast weapon and uh, you have uh, uh, reached proficiency with certain uh, gifts uh, in this game which are the the skills for the classes you can uh, switch them between different classes and in that way create a sort of a build for your character which uh, will make the combat uh, not only this uh, reactionary type in which you just roll and counter attack but also in a more tactical fashion in which uh, you can see a certain opponents that are let's say faster then you can just change your weapon to a faster weapon yes some uh, gifts will become unavailable to you with the other weapon but uh, you are still going to be able to maneuver faster and uh, use the different weapon with with uh, its own unique skills and that way you can like have more tactical approach to the game the cool thing is that you are going to have uh, from what it seems at least in the beta a 
uh, slots for uh, use of gifts, which uh, will probably give you you can uh, a lot of options. You can have something like uh, let's say four skills, uh, four gift skills for uh, one weapon, and uh, four gifts with the other weapon. And then that way you can change and use different. Uh, weapons in different situations. Of course on bonfire you can uh, change those. You also have uh, four slots for additional passive uh, skills, so that's cool too. There also seems to be different uh, scalings for different weapons based on the your blood code, which is the uh, class of course. But that doesn't seem to be that complicated compared to the traditional Souls games. For example, I don't think uh, that you will have to worry here for something like uh, does a holy upgrade on your weapon uh, does the same amount of uh, like uh, damage as let's say a lightning uh, buff to your weapon or uh, complicated stuff like that. It's much more straightforward here. You just have to like upgrade your uh, gifts and uh, make them interchangeable between the different blood codes and uh, then experiment with some upgrades for your weapons and see what works for you. Personally, I uh, found out that uh, like using the caster and uh, uh, something like a more mobile hit and run uh, Two weapons is uh, kind of uh, like the way to go for me personally. Uh, further in the beta, you of course unlock the uh, Berserker class, which has a very low I core count. I core is your uh, magic points. By the way, for some players, it might be a little bit uh, complicated to, to get down all the terms initially. For example, Blood Veil is your armor, Blood Code is your class, Iker is your magic points or skill points, and uh, Haze is your experience, and Misto is the bonfire and stuff like that. But I think if you have played the beta for the weekend, uh, and uh, if you look for information on YouTube, you'll be able to quickly get down what is what. In all that, uh, like with all that terms and what they actually mean in the game, there seems to be this uh, dark and light effect to certain gifts, and you can make uh, like two weapons with uh, two sets of gifts that kind of complement each other. For example, you have uh, this uh, Toad Blood Coat, which is kind of funny when you use it with a female character, and you can have this uh, another sort of a, like a sniper build and they both have these uh, dark type uh, uh, gifts which uh, can be used interchangeably because uh, you uh, in the one of the classes you have a buff for the dark uh, gifts and you can ex of course change your weapon to the like the sniper class and use the gifts in that class also but I-Core is very important in this game, okay? I-Core is your magic points and that is very, I think, important in the game. So, to like uh, put that all together, I don't think that the combat system and the upgrade system and the uh, builds in this game will be very difficult to get uh, for someone who have played at least two Souls games or one Souls game and uh, let's say Bloodborne for a while. So uh, yeah, the other thing that I want to like make prediction of and uh, point out as a very important part of uh, like traditional Souls games versus this game. And that is the progression in the main game, okay? So uh, in the traditional Souls games, also in Sekiro, of course, you have to you have multiple options to go to different levels and complete different tasks, but ultimately there are key things that you have to do and key items that you have to gather in order to then further on progress in the game in a more straightforward fashion. I would love to see uh, Code Vein uh, 
go in this same direction you need to have uh, multiple paths and levels to choose from um, in this game in order to be as interesting as other Souls games so I'm looking forward to that also I have noticed that um, the depths are very like uh, rewarding in terms of experience okay what I mean is I hope that in the final Cold Vein game you have to play the normal game for a while before you go to the depths and I hope that in the depths you don't get uh, uh, the same amounts of experience uh, straight up as you, uh, you as you are able to get them in the beta because if you unlock the depths too early in the game people will just uh, go there farm for something like 10 minutes in order to level up uh, 20 levels or something and then just burn through the other portions of the game uh, very easily or at least up to the point at which uh, the game becomes harder but then they will probably go back to the depths and farm some more so I hope the, that the depths are not that uh, like easily abusable in terms of uh, haze that you're able to get there because if farming and uh, easily leveling up to the point of which your character becomes too OP is a thing early on in this game it will make uh, the game easier and therefore uh, not very enjoyable for some of the traditional Souls fans and it will be may maybe it will be enjoyable for some of the gaming journalists that want to uh, like uh, make their traditional clickbait titles in which they use cheats to progress uh, further in a game like that and after that they have the actual nerve and lack of shame to brag about it but that's a different topic altogether but yeah that's it for the progression I also hope that there is a uh, a lot of variety in terms of uh, main bosses and mini bosses because uh, what we saw from Sekiro on uh, social media at least is that uh, there are a lot of uh, memes about people dying at uh, like mini bosses and people getting angry on the internet so this uh, will play a positive part in the popularity of the game if that's a thing in the final Cold Vein game if uh, there are a lot of uh, like this uh, just like regular big enemies that are uh, just uh, like two or three of them at a time and there are a lot of them out there it will not be that good of the game uh, I hope uh, there is like I said much more variety because it will make the game uh, more enjoyable in the long run and in the in the first couple of days it, in which people are playing the game and they are sharing content and they are, are sharing their opinions of the game and they are creating this buzz on social media how the game is uh, hard or not and there will be no matter what there will be a lot of comparing uh, of Code Vein to the other games so yeah I'm also a little bit worried about the uh, aggro points and the aggro like behavior of the mobs into this game I hope uh, it's uh, not uh, like in the uh, in Dark Souls 3 and Sekiro because uh, I think that the aggro in uh, behavior in Dark Souls 1 or 2 actually make the game those games harder compared to the traditional Souls games but yeah that's overall my opinion of uh, Cold Vein compared to the traditional Souls games. I like the game a lot and, and I will definitely play it a lot after it's released. I hope this video was enjoyable and uh, useful to you when it comes down to opinions. Please share what you think uh, about Cold Vein as beta and how it fares uh, compared to the Souls games down in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!